Hello, this is Stephen Whitfield with Drilling Contractor. Today I'm joined by Clint Leeser and Mike Buecher, and we're going to talk about the recently launched IADC Directional Drilling Services Committee. Mr. Leeser is the chair and Mr. Buecher is the vice chair of this committee. Thank you very much for taking the time with us today. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. So my first question is, what was your motivation for forming this Directional Drilling Services Committee with IADC? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question. I, I, look, I've, I've been in this business for about 40 years. I've, I've watched the IDC during those decades. I've actually marveled at the, the, the closeness of the directional drilling contractors, even though they compete on a, on a fierce basis every day. And, and I've been in the directional drilling business pretty much my whole career. And, and we've gone from in the 70s and 80s, eight to 10, 12 directional drilling companies to, I don't know, Mike, what do you think we have today, 80? Uh, directional yeah. drilling companies, and, and we're a very fragmented segment of this industry. And it, in in 2019, I just it just occurred to me that we needed to 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 put ourselves together um, in a common voice, similar to the IADC. Yes, I would uh, just follow that up quickly with saying, um, without question, our group of uh, companies, our peers, uh, there is a strong desire to accomplish something. Uh, that it, that uh, provides some value to the entire organization. And I think we'll get in a little bit later on what some of that might be, but um, not unlike the IADC back when it was formed. And I, Clint, yeah, I think you know the, uh, the year. The 40s. It was the 40s. Oh. Um, you know, the, the, that group of individuals saw a need within their organizations to do something together. I think that it's safe to say that uh, uh, between Clint and myself and some other hardworking people, we see the same with our uh, directional drilling industry. One of the slides I put up at, at all of our meetings is talking about the IDC be, being founded in, in the 40s by a small group of guys that, that really had the vision of, of pulling together the, uh, that segment of the industry to have one common voice. And so this is what we were trying to do. Um, th this project really got started in 2019 and an uh, interesting path to get to IDC because it was over a weekend when I reached out to, to, to Mike at, at Phoenix and about nine other of our um, presidents and CEOs that were our peers in this industry. And I'll tell you over the course of about 30 minutes, got a resounding, we're in, we wanna be a part of this. Uh, and we were actually going to meet offsite and I started losing sleep at night that we've got 10 competitors all going to meet offsite and the, the optics weren't good. So I, I went ahead and, and, and called Jason at, at IEDC and I told him our plan. And I, and I had this meeting with Jason and Lisa and Bob and, and Mike DuBose and, and they're nodding their heads and they're understanding everything I'm saying about what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. And they said, why don't you just form a committee inside of the IEDC? Um, and it, to me, it was almost what I was baiting them to offer for us because with the, with the umbrella of IDC, with the success of IDC, I felt like we had a much better chance with the Directional Drilling Services Committee. I'd like to thank IDC and the support that we've had from the very first meeting that I had with, with Jason and his team uh, through even recently getting emails from the whole team. These guys have been nothing but fully supportive of Mike and I and our team as we're traveling down a path that we've never traveled before. And these guys are extremely successful. And and, and Mike and Bob and Lisa have been at most of our meetings. They've given us spectacular input that have helped us move the ball forward down the field. It's, it's a daunting task to think of uh, going down this path without the support of IEDC at this point. They, uh, that's been fantastic for us. I, I don't think we would be anywhere near um, as far along as we are without their support. So we got started in 2019. We had our first meeting in 2020. We had a lot of enthusiasm. We had two members from the first 10 founding companies of the Directional Drilling Services Committee. And then boom, we all know what happened in 2020. We, we've got COVID, everybody shut in, the price of oil crashes, the, everybody's business is, is, is in survival mode. And we come out of that in 2021. And look, we're still in survival mode and there's not a lot of free time for everybody to get together. So we're in the process now of just kind of reviving this effort, um, Mike and I and the rest of the founding companies. So we're very excited about it. And, and recently put together what we think is our mission statement for, for the Directional Drilling Services Committee. And, and candidly, it, it mirrors a little bit of the IEDC. I mean, we wanna advocate for responsible standards, practices, legislation and regulations 
that provide for safe, efficient, environmentally sound directional drilling operations. We want to provide a forum for education, accreditation, and training. We want to collaborate and address issues facing the directional drilling industry in a manner that will strengthen the overall industry and all participants. We want to facilitate the exchange of information, ideas, and initiatives that will strengthen the overall industry and all participants. And we want to develop industry standards, practices, definitions, nomenclature, and contracts that will benefit not only the directional drilling segment of the industry, but also our customers. Everybody in the, in the, in the, in the drilling industry will benefit from this, this uh, collaboration of directional drilling companies together. This is a very positive thing. What are the biggest goals for the committee? What do you hope to achieve in the next year or two? Look, we, 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 have, we have massive goals. We, we, Mike and I sit down and we talk to some of the other executive steering committee members. And, and look, we want to form a little mini IEDC inside of the IEDC that's going to be our directional drilling services committee. We wanna pattern ourselves after that, that organization. And so these are very lofty goals that we've gotta we've got to start at that point and work backwards. So what we're trying to do now is just get the infrastructure in place uh, over the next six to nine months and, and, and get a couple of wins under our belt that, that really drive some enthusiasm with our peers to, to, to collaborate with us more on a, on a consistent basis. I'll add that the when you ask about the short term, let's call it the one or two year horizon, uh, generating some some buzz amongst our peers and also amongst our client base. Uh, I, part of the success of this operation is going to be uh, working closely with uh, not only other directional drilling contractors, but also our customers. They, they've certainly got um, a strong voice in the direction that this whole organization goes. So. Um, Generating some buzz and some interest amongst all of those groups will be critical here in the first uh, first couple of years. Absolutely. What are your ultimate plans for membership within this committee? Ultimately, the Directional Drilling Services uh, Committee will, will encompass the entire directional drilling industry, all of the directional drilling service providers and our supply chain. From each of your perspectives, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that directional drilling service providers face in the industry today? Like some of the challenges that we face in the industry today are not unlike all segments of the industry. There's lower activity, uh, pricing levels are lower, uh, availability of equipment personnel are lower. Um, across the board, it's a, it's a difficult environment as we all know what we've been through in the last 12 months. Yep, I'll add um, uh, personnel, uh, supply chain, everything that you see from other industries are certainly affecting our industry as well. Um, we've got ESG concerns that um, we have to address as well. So the, the, the list is long, uh, certainly not insurmountable. We've got lots of very good people that can work very hard to, uh, to help this overall industry overcome the challenges. But um, yeah, there, there's certainly uh, plenty of things to worry about these days in this business. You know, I, I would think one thing people may or may not realize the directional drilling services on most projects today are picked up at surface and released at TD. So we're typically on a rig 27, 28 days a month. Uh, this is far different than it was in decades past. So the importance of what we do, the performance that we provide to our customer base, the, the safety that we provide to our customer base is, a, is becoming paramount important. Well, Mr. Leeser, Mr. Buker, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, this committee seems like it's going to be a, a fascinating committee. Sounds like you have a lot on your agenda. It'll be interesting to see how this committee becomes a valuable part of IADC moving forward. So thank you again for speaking with us. And thank you, Stephen, very much for your time today. Uh, we would ask that if there are senior executive level uh, personnel from directional drilling companies around the U.S. that are interested in getting involved, uh, please reach out to us through the link that you'll see on the screen here, and we will be sure to get back to you as soon as we can and get you invited to a committee meeting in the near future. Stephen, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. And thank you for visiting Drilling Contractor.